Hi, this is Patrick from STH. Today we wanted to talk about AMD Infinity Fabric versus Intel's Broadwell architecture, which is about to be replaced by Skylake, but we still think it's a relevant topic. We wanted to put together a comprehensive guide to the Infinity Fabric and why it matters. In AMD's design, in a dual socket system, you'll actually see eight different NUMA nodes. NUMA stands for non-uniform memory access, and you're going to see why in a second that actually makes sense given AMD's architecture. We were prompted to do this on the plane on the way home from an AMD event. AMD gave us this information, they just didn't put it all in one package, so we decided to put it all together so we can show our readers. The first step when you understand AMD's architecture is you have to look at a CCX core, which is four cores with their level two and level three caches. We didn't have a slide handy, but if you take two of these together with a interface in between them, that gives you a basic building block for AMD's dies. To understand AMD Epic architecture, you have to understand that there are four of these packages with two CCX complexes each on each Epic package. Each die has a dual channel DDR4266 memory controller, which gives you a total of eight memory channels and up to 16 DIMMs per package. While AMD Epic has eight memory channels per package, Intel only has four in Broadwell. So that's one of the big selling points. One of the major reasons that we see each Epic package has four NUMA nodes is because each die has direct access to two of the memory channels and then the other six it needs to go over the Infinity Fabric in order to access. Beyond the on-package Infinity Fabric, there's also package-to-package -package Infinity Fabric, which is another slide that AMD gave us. And then finally, AMD showed that there's also the ability to host a number of PCIe lanes, with some of the PCIe lanes being redirected towards Infinity Fabric in two-socket configurations. Especially with single-socket configurations, that makes the AMD solution pretty awesome. AMD did show what happens when you put memory channels and all this infinity fabric into a two socket configuration when you also have the PCIe lanes configured as infinity fabric links, but you're not seeing the PCIe links as connecting to PCIe devices such as NVMe drives or GPUs. This slide does show the difference between on package and package to package infinity fabric bandwidth. What the slide does not have is the fact that you can also have PCIe devices that need to communicate over it. Since we've gotten a lot of questions on this, we decided to build a few slides showing what happens when you have all of this Infinity Fabric tied in with different devices. This is going to be the base image we're going to start from, which shows two packages, each with the Infinity Fabric links between each of the dies. So you see four dies per package, and you'll see a total of six Infinity Fabric links between them. Each die will have three Infinity Fabric links so that way it can directly access each of the other dies on the package. This is an ingenious design that allows AMD to use a common building block and build much larger systems. AMD also has Infinity Fabric links between matching dies on each package and that allows AMD to have socket-to-socket -socket communication. Using combinations of these on-package and package-to-package -package links allows AMD to shuttle data between all of the different dies on each package. It also means that there are multiple routes to move data around. Adding one more layer of complexity, remember that there are a total of eight cores in two different CCX complexes that are sitting on each of these silicon packages. This is starting to get a little bit crowded so you can see why AMD didn't give this view, but at the same time it shows the complexity that they were able to manage with this design. It also shows why AMD produced benchmarks using eight different VMs compiling Linux kernel for example because you can keep each one on a different piece of silicon and you don't have to go over the infinity fabric which keeps performance awesome. Now we're going to layer on the memory and we're only putting two DIMMs per die which signify the two channels per die but you can see some of the complexities here. For example there are 
local RAM modules for each die. And then there are modules that are one hop on the Infinity Fabric away and other modules that are two hops away with different speeds on the package to package hops. So in terms of why there are eight NUMA nodes, I think it should make a decent amount of sense given this complexity. Also traversing the Infinity Fabric is not just cache da data as well as RAM data, but you also have PCIe devices such as GPUs. What AMD's design also means is that going from GPU to GPU on a two socket system with by 16 links to each GPU, that means that you're going to have to go over the Infinity Fabric with GPU data. If you follow the lines, it also means that in some cases, memory can be located very far away from each GPU. And GPU to GPU communication, even on the same package, is going to require an Infinity Fabric hop. The bottom line is that Infinity Fabric is being used for a ton of information. Now, looking at the Intel side in a dual socket Broadwell configuration, here's what a high core count configuration might look like. You see that there's only four DDR4 channels per die, but on the die there are two rings. Each ring it has a bridge between them, and then one of the rings has all of the QPI and PCIe connectivity. The key takeaway here is that AMD is using Infinity Fabric to do much of what Intel does on silicon using a lower cost manufacturing process. One example is that if you are doing GPU to GPU or GPU to NIC communication on an Intel socket, you don't need to move across a fabric to do so. I think it's fair to say that Intel's design philosophy is to keep as much on a single piece of silicon as possible and use its interconnect infrequently, whereas AMD is relying upon its Infinity Fabric for a lot of communication. We've seen AI companies, for example, use two different Mellanox cards just so that they don't have to go over the QPI link into a different NUMA node. While that really focused on high core count, what happens when we look at low core count instead? So in this example, we're taking eight cores per package, which means that each die will have two cores active. We don't know exactly where they sit, but suffice to say they'll have two per. And what you're going to notice on this design is that AMD is able to keep full functionality. At the same time, you also notice that any application that is going to span multiple cores is going to hit the Infinity Fabric quite often. We expect that that Infinity Fabric will be less loaded due to having less cores, but still consideration. On the Intel side, the lower core count parts only have a single ring, and all of the RAM and PCIe devices, for example, sit off that ring. Although you have fewer RAM channels, you have fewer PCIe lanes, this design is fairly simple and keeps most of the interconnect all on silicon. We'll have the update for Skylake SP pretty soon, but hopefully this shows why there are fairly stark architectural performance differences between the two designs. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more cool videos.